Hello Year 7, welcome back to week 4 of our development topic. So last week we learnt that development changes over time and we had to think about how it changes and why. We also know from weeks 1 and 2 that different countries have different levels of development. So this week we are asking ourselves why is that? What are the barriers to development? Or what stops people, what stops countries from all having equal development? Okay. So what I want you to do, grab a pen and paper and write down as many things as you can think of that might stop a country being as developed as another country. So what things might stop a country becoming developed? Pop development in the middle and around the edge you're going to write as many things as you can think of. So pause the video and do that now. Okay, lovely. So hopefully we've got lots of ideas. As I'm going through the next slide, what I'd like you to do in a different colour if you can, but don't worry if you don't have one to hand, is write down any of the things that I talk about that you didn't have or add a little bit to yours if maybe I explain it in a way that helps you. So I'm going to go through the barriers or some of the barriers to development now and make sure you add some on. Okay, so we're going to think about our barriers to development now. So the first one we're going to think about, natural resources. Now, having natural resources, you would think would be a positive thing for a country. They have more resources to trade with. They have more resources to manufacture. However, um, this theory called the resources curse suggests that actually the opposite is true and that countries that have an abundance of natural resources are less likely to be developed. So natural resources can be a barrier to development. No one's quite sure why, but it is a commonly seen pattern. Okay, next up, we have economic. So a country with high levels of debt, for example, will have an economic barrier to development. If you're paying all your money off to other countries, you can't invest it in your own country and your own improvement. We also have trade. So trade is a really important thing for countries to develop. And some countries are locked into unfair trade deals because they used to be ruled by other countries that they now trade with. So colonialism is the idea of one country ruling another country. This happened a lot where Europe went and colonised countries in Africa, South America, and those countries are now suffering because they are locked into unfair trade deals with the people they used to be ruled by. Okay, so then that leads us into political. Lots of these countries also have corrupt governments. Um, their governments don't spend money in the right place. So the money doesn't make it to education and healthcare. And those governments are corrupt. Or you have war-torn governments. So whether that is war within a country, so a civil war or war with other countries, war takes up a lot of money and that can be a political barrier to development. So politics is just the way a country is governed, uh, the policies they make, things like that. So when we say political, we mean war-torn, we mean corrupt governments and um, not investing money in the right place. The opposite of that is good investment in healthcare, education, those sort of services mean that countries tend to be more developed. Okay, our next one we're going to think about are regional differences. So we know that a country has designated a level of development, but within countries, there are lots of regional differences. And if you do task three, this is something you're going to think about within the UK. So those regional differences, the poorer areas, the areas that are more in poverty, can hold back the other areas of the country from becoming more developed. But that's, again, linking back to our government because the funds aren't being spent in the place they need to be spent necessarily. So those poorer areas might need more government funds and might not be getting it. But regional differences is part of the barrier to development. OK, next up, we have social. Now, social, we're going to think about in two ways. So first, you have general social for everybody. So if a country has low levels of education, so children don't go to school for as long, you have less people going to university or you have poor health care. So you have not enough qualified, skilled doctors. You don't have as much money put into hospitals. These two things can be social barriers because they are affecting people directly and people's ability to work and lots of other reasons. But this tends to be exacerbated 
So made worse in countries where women make up a smaller part of the workforce. So within our social problems, we also have gender inequality and countries where women and girls get less education, they have poor health care, they're more likely to die from childbirth and they are less likely to be in the workforce. That in itself is a barrier to education. Women make up half of the people in the world. That's half of the workforce you could have. And so that is a barrier to education. And that's something you'll look at if you do task four. And then finally, we have the physical geography barrier. So the environmental physical barrier, things like if a country is mostly desert, that will limit the amount of food they can produce. If a country has lots of mountains, trade becomes harder. Landlocked countries, so countries that aren't surrounded by sea on any side, so Malawi is an example of a landlocked country in Africa, they struggle with trade because they can't get their goods out as easily. And then you have natural events, natural disasters, things like are, is a country prone to flooding? Bangladesh has three rivers running through it, all of which meet at the same point and they flood really easily. So Bangladesh, lots of flooding there, that's a barrier. Um, if you're in the path of a cyclone or a hurricane, so there is a certain band around the world where they're more likely to happen, those are natural disasters. Some countries like the Philippines experience lots of different natural disasters and those can be a barrier to development as well so just to summarize we have natural resources economy politics regional differences social and physical geography we'll call it the physical geography in an area so those are just six of our potential barriers to development there are obviously lots more and you potentially have thought of more when you did your mind map earlier but those are the sort of key ones I wanted to touch upon this week, which leads me nicely into our tasks for the week. OK, so on the screen, you can see our tasks for the week. So the first one is a little bit like we've done today, but a different video. You're going to watch this video on why some countries are rich and some countries are poor and going to create a spider diagram. And you might want to just pick a different colour and extend your spider diagram you started today, but you're going to. Create a spider diagram of the reasons you see in the video. So definitely watch it, it's really interesting. And when you've done that, I want you to just pick one reason that you think is the most important reason that some countries aren't developing. Okay, so what is the most important reason and tell me why you think that. Okay, then if you are going to do that one, I also want you to not just write down political, I want you to explain a little bit why that is a barrier so explain that it's linked to war spending lots of money or corrupt governments not investing in the right place okay so try not to just write down the word try and explain it a little bit more okay task two is looking at the causes of poverty now for this task there are two worksheets and the textbook pages that you're going to need all of the resources will be up on class charts your teachers might put them in teams as well so everything you need will be there but the idea is you're going to rank the different causes of poverty now these are different to barriers of development but you will see a lot of overlap and then you're going to explain why you've ranked them that way so if you decide um, a certain one is number one, it's the biggest cause of poverty, then you're going to write a sentence to explain why and do the same until you get down to number seven, nine, I can't remember how many there are off the top of my head. Okay, so that's task number two. You'll need the worksheet labelled worksheet one and two, week four, task two, because there is also a worksheet for task number three. So task number three is looking at regional differences and you're going to make your own choropleth map. Now, we looked a little bit about choropleth maps when we looked at GNI a couple of weeks ago. We looked at the distribution of GNI around the world and the different colours told us how much um, a country's GNI was or how little. And you're going to do the same thing. OK, so there's a video in case you're not sure where to start that will help you with choropleth maps. But the worksheet has all the data you need and it should have the explanation you need too. And then if you're feeling like that was a bit easy for you I want you to do the challenge and say why you think that London has inequalities and whether you think other countries experience a similar level of regional inequality okay lovely finally then task four is looking at gender inequality 
So there is a poster on page 135 of the book and there are lots of infographics, so just short picture information um, posters on the web link below from Women Deliver. And you're going to explain why is gender equality important to development? And then if you want to do the challenge, you're going to think about why some countries have gender inequality at all. So some countries have it worse than others. Gender equality is everywhere. And you're going to think about the importance of gender in gender equality for development. OK, that sums up this week. Hopefully we've got everything we need to get started now. Remember, if you're stuck, email your teacher, message them on Teams. Uh, a little reminder that we are having happy hour drop-in sessions from 3.30 to 4 all this week. One of the three geography teachers will be there. I believe Monday is Mrs Cook, Tuesday is Mr Angia, Wednesday and Thursday are me and Friday is Mr Angia. So if you are stuck and you want some instant help, 3.30 to 4.30 all this week, you can talk to one of the geography teachers. Okay, have fun with it this week, Year 7, and I will see you next week.